So today we can discuss about the counting problem. So in counting problem, first we can start with the sum rule principle. Sum rule principle says a event E can be occur in n number of ways and the event F can be occur in n number of ways and both events cannot occur simultaneously so then we have to find the so total event can be occur according to the sum rule we can say equal to m plus n ways similarly we can say the event event can be occur in n one ways e2 event can be occur in n two ways and these are the event and up to en ek event occur in n k ways so total and all the events cannot occur simultaneously so total number of events can be occur which is nothing but n1 plus n2 up to n of k ways so that is called as a sum rule principle the sum rule principle says in the n of a plus b there is a two event which is nothing but equal to n of a plus n of b so that's part is called as a sum rule principle similarly we can also find the product rule principle or the product rule principle says so e event can occur in n number of ways and f event can be occur in n number of ways so as per the product rules the event can be occur in total number of event occur which is called as a m into n ways similarly we can say even event occur in n one ways e2 event occur in n two ways and up to ek event occur in n k ways so total number of event should be occur in product rule n one into n two up to n k so n of a cross b is a Cartesian product or cross product which is nothing but equal to n of a dot n of p. So this is called as a product rule and this is called as a sum rule. So now the next part which we want to discuss here that is called as a factorial notation. So in factorial notation we can say the factorial of n equal to n into n minus 1 of factorials. So we can say just we can find the factorial of 5 equal to 5 into 4 factorial. Now again we can simplify it is going to the near to the base value and base value is nothing but the 0 factorial. So it is 5 into 4 into 3 factorial then again simplify 5 4 3 into 2 factorial after 5 4 3 2 into 1 factorial and the 1 factorial is equal to 0 and 0 factorial is equal to 0. So 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 into 0 factorial and 0 factorial we should know about the value 1. So what is the value of n factorial? It is nothing but equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and so on up to 3 to n 1. So that is the way in which we can notation of the factorial. And factorial 0 always equal to 1. The factorial we can also represent in this way or we can represent in this way. So now the factorial 0 which is equal to factorial 1 both are the same and 0 factorial is called as a base value after that the function cannot be called by itself the recursive cannot be called so this is nothing but a base value so now after the factorial notation we can come to the binomial coefficient so It is a binomial coefficient. Generally, the binomial coefficient we can represent in the form of the symbol is n of r. So that symbol we have to use to represent that symbol is used to represent binomial coefficient. So 
and we can find the value of this n of r, which is also equivalent to called as a n c of r. So, how we can generate the value of n of r? We can just write here the value of n of r, which is the n n minus one, n minus two, up to n minus r plus one. So, that is the value we can find, and this is the value up to the one, two, three, up to r minus one into r. So, that is the value of n of r. Now, we can just multiply. Both the term, either this multiply of the upper side and lower side, we can multiply n minus r factorials. So what we can get, the value become is like that. If uh, uh, we can multiply, so we can got n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial. So the question is that the value which is equivalent to n of r is this one, or which is also equivalent to factorial n upon factorial r into factorial n minus r. But the one thing you have to know, n minus n minus r, which is also equal to r, because n and n we have to cut off, and the resultant value is generated as a r. So, so we have the following rules. You have to remember n n minus r, it is equal to n of r. So that is the another way in which we can find the n of n minus r by limit coefficient which is equal to n of r. So if a plus b equal to n, then what will be happen in the case of uh, simplification? We can say the n of a which is equal to n of b. Now we can say we can just find the value of a uh, few for example we can find the find the value of factorial eight or we can just find the value of eight of two. So how to calculate the value based on the binomial coefficient? We can just use the factorial eight upon factorial two into eight minus two factorial. It is eight factorial upon two factorial into six factorial. Now this 8 factorial we can reduce to 8 into 7 into 6 factorial upon 2 factorial into 6 factorial. 6 factorial and 6 factorial will be cut out. Now it is nothing but 2 factorial equal to 2. So 2 fours are 8, it is equal to 28. So 8 of 2 coefficient, binomial coefficient value is nothing but 28. We can substitute this value based on the formula factorial n upon factorial r into n minus r factorial. Similarly, we can also again find a few values, more values, that is called as a 10 of 3. We can just use, it is the n, it is r, the n factorial upon r factorial into 10 n minus r factorial. It is 10 upon 3 factorial into 7 factorial. 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 factorial upon 3 into 2 into 1 into 7 factorial. Both are cut out. Now, 3 3 is 9, 2 4 is 8. It is nothing but 120. So, in that way, we can just find the binomial coefficient value based on the formula factorial n upon factorial r into factorial n minus r. Now, the next one which we can discuss here the binomial coefficient and Pascal triangle. Binomial coefficient and Pascal triangle. Here, based on the binomial coefficient, the symbol we can use n of r symbol or ncr which is equal to as a binomial coefficient. Now, we can just create a uh, Pascal triangle. We have to know the few properties we have to remember in the mind while we creating the Pascal triangle. So before we can just write that a plus b to the power n equal to summation k equal to 0 to n 
and we have to take the value of the value which will be the n of k a n minus k and b to the power k. So that is the expansion of a plus. It is a expansion of a plus b to the power n. In a term of that is one is the n of k is called as a binomial function and this is called as a term a to the power n minus k and b to the power of k. So now this is the coefficient of the successive power of a plus b can be arranged in a triangular array. So successive power how do we can use the two rules? First is that each row start and end with one. It start and end with one. And second concept is that the previous two term addition, the previous two term addition become a resultant value of the third. So, so this is nothing but the adding of two number appearing adding of two numbers appearing directly above it. So that's the two rules you have to remember. Just we have to create one master triangle here. It is starting with one. Every line should be start and end with one. Start and end with one. Now we have to take this one also. Then here one also. Here one and one also. So now how to create one plus one? It is a two. Now. 1 plus 1, it is a 2, 1 and 2, it is a 3, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 1, 4, 6, and it is 4, it is 5, 10, 10, 5, now it is 6, it is 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So in that way, you have to observe that this 6 is nothing but the addition of these two terms directly above the term it's 20 it comes from this one 10 and this 10 the 15 should be come from this one and this one so these all are the values are called as a binomial coefficients just we can find and we have to prove that one a plus b to the power 0 which is nothing but equal to 1 now a plus b to the power 1 equal to a plus b and substitute with this formula you can generate all the values we can just find a plus b square it is a square plus 2ab plus b square a plus b cube it is a cube plus so here we have just seen this is the a square plus sorry it is this one it is the a square plus 2ab plus b square so a square plus 2ab plus b square that indicates the meaning is nothing but the 2 is the binomial coefficient similarly we can find the 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube so here the things we have to generally find out the a cube should be generated with the help of a of n minus k into b of k that formula n of k is nothing but the binomial coefficient so binomial coefficient is the 3, 3, it should be generated as a binomial coefficient. So we can also, you can just uh, uh, use the term here, n plus r of r, which is equal to n of n minus 1 plus n of r. So here we can just find the substitution of the Pascal triangles and we can generate this type of values. So this is called as a Pascal triangle. Similarly, we can find a plus b to the power 4, which is equal to a4 plus 4a cube b plus 6a square b square plus 4ab cube plus b to the power 4 and so on. So that's where we can just find out the binomial coefficients. Now the next points we can discuss which is the permutation and combination. So so 
computation means that any arrangement of set of object any arrangement of a set of object in given order is called permutation of object and this the things you have to remember taken all object at a time taken all object at a time so any arrangement of set of objects in a given order is called a permutation of the object in which the condition is applied to take all the object at a time so here the number of permutation of n object number of permutation of n object taken r at a time we can represent with the help of n p r or p of n comma r or p of n comma r that is the way in which we have to represent the permutation so the permutation means uh, the we can just find the formula by the principle of counting we can just find p of n comma r equal to n n minus 1 up to n minus r plus 1 so n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to n minus r plus 1 equals to n n minus 1 n minus 2 up to n minus r plus 1 into n minus r factorial upon we can just write n minus r factorial so we can just simply multiply and divide n minus r factorial the resultant value will be generated as a n factorial upon n minus r factorial that is equal to p of n comma r so that is the way the formula of p of n r or we can also call it as a n p r which is equal to factorial n upon factorial of n minus r now the thing is that if r equal to n if r equal to n that is nothing but p of n comma n which is the n factorial upon n minus n is 0 factorial and 0 factorial we should know it is about so it is nothing but the factorial r equal to n then p of n comma n which is equal to factorial n now the next part we can discuss it is the way in which we have to use the formula first is the p of n comma r another is the if r equal to n then we can generate p of n comma n equal to factorial n now the next part is the permutation with repetition permutation with repetition so in permutation or with repetition we can number of permutation of multi set in which sum of which are alive we can just represent n semicolon n1 comma n2 comma up to nk which is nothing but equal to uh, factorial of n upon n1 factorial into n2 factorial into n3 factorial up to n of k factorial so that's the formula you have to remember in the case of permutation with repetition in the multi set the sum of sets are alive we should represent in the form of n factorial upon n1 into n2 into n3 into to nk factorial so here we can just find the value of 5 semicolon 3 we have to just put the value of factorial 5 upon factorial 3 which is 5 into 4 into 3 factorial upon 3 factorial both are cut it is equal to 20 so that's the way you have to repetition you can use the semicolon after total number of objects but multi set and n1 n2 n3 nk are alike same set of like objects so 
Now the next part we can discuss, which is called as a combination. So in combinations, first we can write the definition. A combination of these n object, a combination of these n object taken r at a time is any selection of r of the objects where order does not count where order does not count so what is the meaning they will say in uh, permutation we can take an all object at the same time but in the case of combination if all these n object taken r at a time in any selection of the r objects so where order does not matter or order does not count that is called as a combination and it should be represented in the either in the form of n c r c of n comma r or c of n of r so that is the one relationship between the permutation and combination is uh, p of n comma r equal to factorial n into c of n comma r so basically c of n comma r equal to p of n comma r upon r factorial which is n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial so we can say c of n comma r and n of r the binomial coefficient they can be changed interchangeably we can also perform or we can say it is interchangeably so you can know the two concepts the relationship between n r and c r is c of n comma r equal to nothing but p of n comma r into factorial r and this formula it is used for the p of n comma r as you can know the n p r equal to factorial n upon n minus r into factorial which is also called as a p of n comma r so we can just what we can do we can this p of n comma r divided by r factorial it should be generate the ncr so that is the relationship between the pr and cr permutation and combinations so now uh, the next one is we can perform is the pyram mul principle So in pyramid mode principle, we say that if n pyramid modes are occupied by n plus one, by n plus one or more pyramid. Then at least one pyramid hole is occupied by more than one pyramid. So that is the pyramid hole principle. In this n pyramid hole are occupied by the n plus one or more pyramid, then at least one pyramid is occupied by more than one pyramid. Another is the rule which is called as a generalized pyramid hole principle, which says that if n pyramid hole are occupied by k n plus one or more pi n, then then 
where k is positive integer then at least one pi gram hole is occupied by k plus 1 or more pi gram so that is the two general principles we have to use one principle is that the n pi gram hole are occupied by the n plus 1 or more pi gram than at least one pi gram is occupied by more than one pi gram similarly the generalized pi gram hole says the n pi gram hole are occupied by k n plus 1 or more pi gram where k is a positive integer then at least one pi gram hole is occupied by k plus 1 or more pi gram so here we can take one example in which we can more clarify about the concepts if the n equal to 10 the find the minimum number of student minimum number of students in a class to be sure that three of them are born in same month so we can find the number, minimum number of students in a class to be sure that three of them are born in the same month. So how to solve this problem? Because we know the n equal to total number of months is 12. Now the k plus 1 which is equal to to sure that three of them are born in the same month. It is a pi gram which is called k plus 3 equal to 3. So k equal to 2. Now we can put the formula in nk plus 1 n equal to 12 and k equal to 2 so 12 into 2 plus 1 which is nothing but 25 so out of the 25 students in a class 3 of the students have born in the same month so that is the so that is the solution of this problem so 25 students minimum in the class in which 3 of them born in the same month so that type of problem we can solve in the help of uh, generalized pi gram hole principle. So next we can discuss about the partition set and ordered partition and unordered partition sets. So first is the ordered partition. So here we have to just take an example, a bag A which can contain a 7 marble slab, 7 marble slab 1 through 7 and they can be put into the arranged number of partition and the partition is nothing but A1, A2, A3. So how we can arrange we can just add in one first row here then 3, 4, 5 and then 6 and 7 so we can just find the number of ordered partition so, so number of ordered partition we can determine in this problem of ordered partition what we can take this is the total number of 7 slabs out of 7 we can first select the 2 from the cell A and then they can be from the cell A it is the cell A so we can arrange in the way of 7 of 2 now we can select the second the remaining element is how much? return 3 and 2, 5 out of 5 we can element select 3 in ordered partition and which is nothing from the cell 2 so it is the 5 of 3 and third one is it is only 6 and 7 2 elements is remaining and we can select from the slab A3 so that is the way 2 of 2 so total number of way in which we can arrange the ordered partition it is this we can just multiply these three terms it is nothing but factorial 7 upon 2 factorial into 7 minus 2 factorial and it is a 5 factorial upon 3 factorial into 5 minus 3 factorial and this is the 2 factorial upon 2 factorial into 2 minus 2 it is 0 factorial 
So now it is nothing but equal to one. Zero factorial is equal to one. So the whole term will be equal to one. Now we can simplify seven into six into five factorial upon two factorial into five factorial, and two three is a six. Now we can five into four into three factorial upon three factorial into two factorial. It is two two is a four, and it is one. It is nothing but ten. It is twenty one. Into one into one, which is equal to two one zero ways in which we can ordered partition can be created. So the meaning of the ordered partition is that the seven marble we can select from one to seven, and the partition we can arrange which is nothing but a one a two and a three. So how it will be arranged? We can just first assign the number of this one. We have to just take a one on the two slabs. In a two we can take three, and in a three we can take two slabs. So the way in which arranging the way, which is nothing but two hundred ten ways. So now the next we can discuss, which is called as a unordered partition. And the ordered partition, one condition you have to also remember that if the a i not equal to a j, then a i intersection a j equal to null. So another is the unordered partition. So in unordered partition, we can just the whatever the ordered partition we can take, we can divide by the factorial k, where k is the number of unordered partitions. So here we can more clarify about the concept of unordered partition. So number of unordered partition. From the number of ordered partition by dividing of k factorial, where k is a set that has same number of elements. Where k is the same set, the k same set of elements. So this is the parts which we can discuss in the part of the ordered partition and unordered partition. Now we have to go through about the few problem based on the counting concepts. So first problem is that in a certain programming language, in a certain programming language, the variable should length. One is the variable should length of variable length equal to three, and it should be made by, and it should made by two letter followed by digit, or the variable length equal to two, it should be. Made by letter and followed by digit. So the question is that in the certain programming language, the variable length equal to three, and it should be made of two letter followed by a digit, and its length two, it should be made of letter and followed by the digit. So how many possible variable? How many possible? Variables are there. So first, there is two part. First part is if repetition not allowed. If the repetition not allowed, then we can solve this problem. And when the repetition is allowed, and if the repetition allowed, then what will be the number of variables? So in first case, we can take the length of three. It should be Made by two letter in letter a to z. This total number of letter is twenty six and zero to nine. The total number of digit is ten. So the number of variable of length three, which is equal to twenty six into twenty six into ten. If the repetition is not allowed, so the next it is 
25. Because first character, whatever the character should be encountered, it should not be repeated. So the next number of occurrence of chance is 25. Because total number of characters is 26. Similarly, the number of variables of length 2, which is equal to 26 into 10. So total number of variable of length 3 or 2 which is equal to 26 into 25 into 10 plus 26 into 10 26 into 10 we have to just take common 25 plus 1 which is nothing but 26 26 into 10 and which is called the final result uh, which is the 6 7 6 0 which is called 6, 7, 6, 0. If the repetition is allowed, so when the repetition is allowed, then we can just generate the length of two character, the length of two number of variables or three variables, we can generate 26, 26 into 10, and length of two variable, we can just generate 26 into 10 because the repetition is allowed. So here we can just take total number of variables which is 26, 26 into 10 plus 26 into 10 we can just common 26 into 10 and 26 plus 1 so it is 26 into 27 into 10 and this is the resultant value which is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. so we just find out the value so that's the problem which we can find the uh, number of length, how many number of variables can be exist of the length 2 or 3 if the one is the repetition is allowed another the repetition should not allowed so the next problems is a word that we can read we can know the palindrome number we can just write the 151 it is a palindrome number we can start from the forward direction or we can start from the backward direction both the number will be same that number is called as a palindrome number so that problem is that a word of that read the same when reading forward and back or backward it's called a palindrome number so how many letters seven letter palindrome we can generate seven letter palindromes in English alphabets, so how many number of way we can generate? We can just take here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So enter here, we can write 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we can write the alphabet A, B, C, D, and C, B, A. So it is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, 7. So any of the four way, we can just create the same parameter number of 7 letter. Alphabets. So in several letter alphabet, we can just generate first address of character is 26, second also 26, third character also 26, and fourth character also 26. So how many number of ways we have to generate? It is nothing but 26 to the power of 4. So now the next problem here we can take in how many ways. In how many ways a committee can be formed? A committee can be formed from seven men and two women chosen from so we can just uh, we can choose from seven men and two women, we can choose only uh, the five, three men and two women. So, what is the way? The total number of women is men is seven. Out of we can select only three. And total number of women is total number of women is five. I think it is the five. And out of five, we can select only two. So total number of total ways we have to generate it with the 7, 3 into 5, 2. So it is factorial 7 upon 3 factorial into 7 minus 3 factorial and 5 factorial upon 2 factorial into 
5 minus 2 factorial. It is generated 7 into 6 into 5 factorial upon 7 minus 3 is 5. That is a 3 factorial upon 4 factorial and it is a 5 into 4 factorial and 5 into 4 into 3 factorial upon 2 factorial into 3 factorial. So it is a rate 35 into 10 which is nothing but 350. So total number of we can just generate 350 days or 3 uh, we can require to choose the way 350 ways we have to choose out of the total number of 7 men to 3 men in a committee and out of 5 women to 2 women we can select from a committee. So now the other problem is we can discuss here and that is in how many ways we can a student to be partitioned in three teams. A student can be partitioned in three teams. In three teams consisting of four, three and two students. So the total number of out of the nine students, out of nine students we can select this one. So the way in which we can select the factorial nine is a total. It is nothing but the ordered partitions. We can say or uh, four factorial into three factorial into two factorial. So we can simplify this. It is nine into eight into seven six five into four factorial and four factorial three factorial. It is cut. It is and 2 to the 4 which is generated the final output. So the next problem is that uh, 12 students in a class the problem number 5 the 12 students in a class how many way 12 students take 4 different tests they can take 4 different test if three students are take each test if three students are to take each test so the total number of students is 12 upon four different tests we can conduct so there is a number of four partition and individually we can take three factorial three factorial and three factorial so that is the way in which we can simplify the problem. So, in that way, that is the solution, simplify the solution and we can generate the final output. So, that is the way regarding the problems of the counting problem in which we can discuss the permutation, combinations and binomial coefficient, Pascal triangle generation and the Pygon whole principle and generalized Pygon principle along with the ordered partition and unordered partition. Thank you.